three comma stop loss in Smart Trade is a godsend. Having it all there and contained makes it so much easier to plan your trade and trade your plan. A lot of traders, when you trade directly on exchange, you think that everything is going to go up only. But the reality is that getting stopped out is normal. I know that there are tons of memes about getting stopped out and then seeing the price move up even higher. But trust me, it is pretty much always a better idea to get stopped out early to cut your losers quick and let your winners ride. So when you're setting up your stop loss, note that you have a lot of the similar options that you did in take profit, but now it's stop loss. So you can choose the price at which your stop loss will trigger, and it can be set to last bid or ask. Again, I usually leave it at last, but you can choose between a limit order and a market order. Same concept as before, but note that when you're using a limit order, now you have another window that pops down below. So that's because these are both using conditional orders. If you watch the previous step, I explained how three commas logic and rather the workflow works on the exchanges. Because exchanges limit you to just one open position at a time, they're not going to allow you to open up a position, have a take profit with a limit order and a stop loss with a limit order because you're going to get stopped out. Your price is higher. It won't work. So the conditional limit order there for the stop loss means that as soon as the price comes down to hit that trigger price, boom, then your limit order for your stop loss will be placed on the order book. Depending on the exchange and depending on the trading pair, sometimes it's actually better to use a market sell order for your stop loss. It all comes down to liquidity, as in the amount of trading volume per that trading pair. And it also depends on the uh, like the slippage that, or rather the spread that's in the order book. That's the word I was thinking of, is the spread, the distance between the the asking price, or rather the bid price and the asking price. If it's really wide, that's really wide spread. There's going to be slippage there. Some unique features that three commas offer are also down below in those little check buttons. Note that not all of them are available and some of them are conditional buttons, meaning you have to have something else enabled to use one of them. So the first one that's interesting is stop loss timeout. Because we're using conditional limit orders, we're able to use some intelligent tools to make it a little bit better. So for instance, let's say that the price comes down and it hits your stop loss. You get stopped out automatically. That stinks. Only to see it rise up. Maybe it was a quick move down and it only lasts for four minutes and then it comes right back up. We see this happen a lot in crypto and the stop loss timeout prevents that with a countdown timer. So when the price comes down and it triggers that line, whatever that price is, then it starts a countdown. So you can have it set to any amount in seconds. And note, 300 seconds is five minutes, five times 60, 300 seconds. I know you could do it. So when the price comes down, it's going to start a timer. The possible drawdown with this is obvious. What if the price just keeps falling, keeps falling? I know. I've been there. So it's a little bit of a trade-off, but I will say that stop loss timeout is a really good feature. Another option down there is trailing stop loss. Trailing stop loss, very similar to trailing take profit and trailing buy. The difference is that trailing stop loss is going to be determined by the percentage of your stop loss. So let's say your stop loss is set to 10%. So as the price of your token moves up, it moves up, moves up, moves up, then it comes down, your stop loss is fixed, but it's at this spread of 10%. So as the price moves up, this is going to be moving up at that same 10% value. You get it? So that's trailing stop loss. It's different than trailing take profit, different than trailing buy. Move to break even is one of my favorite features. Move to break even will only be enabled if you have two or more split targets. And here's what it does. When you have split targets, and let's say we just have four. So when the price starts, it takes profit right here. And then as soon as the the price moves up even higher to take profit again, what happens is where your stop loss is down here, it's automatically going to move up to your buy order. This is awesome because even if the price kind of goes up and then it comes back down right to where you entered, you're actually going to end up closing in profit every single time because you're moving it up to break even. Lastly, this isn't a toggle, but it's a really cool feature that's available. It's going to show you a ratio of one to something. And it's letting you know your risk to reward ratio. 
know that there are some really, really good ratios, like one to three or three to one. One to two is not so great. One to four to five is amazing. So you can use math. You can use these ratios to figure out and make sure that you have your take profit and your stop loss in good positions. So that way you're not one to one. One to one is not safe. You want to think about your risk to reward ratio. And that's the tool that they have there. Now that I've gone through all these steps in the window, the last thing to do is to go ahead and create your trade. When you do, a window will pop up with all the parameters for your trade, including an open text box. Note that you can type anything you want. You can use emoji, you can use different characters, different languages, it's whatever you want. And you can also edit this later on. So when you're happy with the order, hit create trade and wait. In the next step, I'm gonna walk through all of this stuff that I just talked about to create a smart trade using some tools to help me figure out what charts might be profitable and what charts might end up in a really good profit.